and 7. Reviews of Clash of the Titans. This week at the movies. This week at the movies, can the winning streak of 3D blockbusters continue at the box office? Liam Neeson and Sam Worthington star in Clash of the Titans. If I do this, I do it as a man. But you are not just a man. Also coming up this week... Do you want to talk? Yeah. Let's talk. From the writer of The Notebook, Dear John, and Knights in Rodanthe, I'm choking up already, it's Miley Cyrus in The Last Song. It should have been her that died that night. It should have been her. Pierce Brosnan, Susan Sarandon, and the brilliant young star of An Education, Carrie Mulligan, come together after a tragedy in The Greatest. Plus, they're not necessarily movie stars, but sometimes their performances can save a movie. We'll talk about some of our favorite unsung supporting actors. Get ready. It's all gods and monsters all the time with Clash of the Titans. I'm A.O. Scott of the New York Times. And I'm Michael Phillips of the Chicago Tribune. It's an old story, The Gods Are Angry, and it's not exactly a new movie. Clash of the Titans is an update, retrofitted for 3D after the fact, and in the wake of Avatar, of a bombastically cheesy, hugely entertaining 1981 picture of the same name. This one stars Avatar's own Sam Worthington as Perseus, a son of Zeus with some daddy issues. Zeus is Liam Neeson, and Hades, his brother, is Voldemort himself, Ray Fiennes. It is time for the mortals to pay. My child waits to do your will. Release the Kraken! Release the Kraken indeed. Frankly, that monster, once it showed up, didn't do much for me, and neither did the pedestrian 3D. But I found myself enjoying quite a bit more of this earnest, muscular epic than I expected to. There's this sexy little training scene, for example, where Perseus gets some Medusa-slaying tips from the demigoddess Io, played by Gemma Arterton. Do you think she'll hand you her head? She won't be gracious about it. One look in her eyes and you're turned to stone. Good. Try not to enjoy this so much. And I have to say, I love some of the special effects, in particular, a bunch of giant scorpions. These monsters honored the legacy of pre-digital special effects pioneer Ray Harryhausen, who animated the critters in the original. For me, this clash had just the right blend of grandiosity and silliness. It's a little campy, a little creepy, a little too long, and sometimes a bit of a mess. But it all adds up to a welcome dose of old-fashioned B-movie entertainment. So see it by Zeus. It doesn't add up at all. You're, you're mounting, I say skip it, and you're mounting a defense of a, of a purely impersonal you mediocrity. You the will of the gods. No, no, it's, you're, you're, defying, you're defying quality with this recommendation. You're, you're talking about a film where the action sequences just come at this sort of tumble, which is typical of an early 21st century action film that doesn't really segment anything into meaningful sequences and builds and, and I, see, you, I, just, I don't you agree. Do not get, I think, you do not get a film to remember here. I think it's a throwback to a, to a pre-digital era. I, think, I agree with you about some of the bigger CGI effects, but I think that those scorpions and, and the strange, you know, djinn characters who are with them, some of the, the mask work and costume work, um, some of the desert landscapes, it does have a kind of cheap, cheesy, no. but also no, I no. found you, very appealing no, um, no, a very you, warm you're look. mounting like a ten, my, my defense of 10,000 BC you're mounting it for the wrong picture I think <laughs> but look take a look at this action sequence okay where the camera is what the actors mm -hmm. are doing in relation to the camera and you tell me if this scene would look any better in 3d <laughs> I think the answer is no. To well, this movie didn't need to be in 3D, and it wasn't originally meant to be in 3D. No, it was so, not. So it's a bit of a red herring there. But what I think is in that scene that is wonderful is Mads Mikkelsen. Agreed, the amazing agreed. Yes. Danish yes. character actor who has not cracked a smile in his entire correct, career. Correct, correct. And who's, who's just, who's terrific. And there's a lot of good, no, campy, no, 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 no. chewy well, no, acting no, fine, in this fine, movie. When the history of 3D is told and, and people start looking at the films that's, where the audience just felt like, eh, this looks like a cheap knockoff. This is one of the... Oh, this one's this fun. Is one this it's more fun than you give it credit for. Uh, your gods must be crazy. Okay, next movie. In an education, Carrie Mulligan gave my favorite female performance of 2009, and she's back on screen in The Greatest, playing a high school graduate 
who loses her virginity to a classmate played by Aaron Johnson. That's in scene one, which is followed by the boy telling the girl, Rose, that he loves her at the exact moment their car is slammed by a truck, leaving the boy dead. The film then becomes a story of the grieving process experienced by the mother, Susan Sarandon, and the stoic father, played by Pierce Brosnan. Here, Rose delivers some surprising news. I've been trying to figure out how you knew Bennett. Are you part of Houston government? Uh, no. no. Um, community service? Just tell me if I'm hot or cold. Cold. Yeah, I don't think he held on to any of his friends from his junior high. No, I'm the one he got pregnant. Writer-director Shauna Fest has a sincere interest in families in crisis in the therapeutic vein of ordinary people. Here, though, it's the script that's ordinary. Watch, though, how Mulligan handles this flashback where the two teenagers first speak to each other. Now, please don't go. It's taken me like a year to get the courage to talk to you. Please don't go. He waited till 3.15 on the last day of school. Right. Yeah, I never said I had a good time. Any good actor's career involves a certain amount of toning up of questionable material, adding dimensions where they're barely suggested on the page. That's what Mulligan is doing here, and for her work alone, I say rent it. So rent I, it. I agree, rent it, and, and, and I agree with you that, that, that the material is, is let's say, um, a bit soft. And you Soapy, do, too. <laughs> you do feel like you're being kind of pushed around and, and, and manipulated by the story. But I think Mulligan is good. I also think that Sarandon and Brosnan are quite good, and I think that the performances and also a kind of relaxed style of direction kind of make this make this watchable. I, watchable say, is the yeah, word, I think. Yeah. I disagree with you on Brosnan, though. There's something about Brosnan that in this picture, he's kind of reverted back to uh, kind of a, uh, just a, a lot of posing and sort of a stilted, you know, uh, unemotional quality that it has nothing to do with an unemotional character, but an actor who's just sort of like hitting his marks a little too studiously. Mulligan, none of that. It is completely free flowing. Really? Because I, th I thought that the scenes of the, of, the, of the two of them together, because they connect. You know, the mother, played by Susan Sarandon, really resists this girl and is kind of angry at her right. and the intrusion that she represents into the mother's private world of, of grief. But the connection that develops between the father. And, and, and the girl I thought was, was some of the best, most delicate and sensitive stuff no, in the movie. I, 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 didn't, I didn't believe it in the writing at all. So I think, I think what we're agreeing on, though, is that the actors do exactly. everything they can yes. to kind of and, bring and, it up. And yeah. actors can do that. Yes, they can. Coming up next, from Hannah Montana to melodrama, Miley Cyrus gets serious in the last song. And later in the show, you may not remember their names, but you can't forget their faces. A look at some of the great character actors of our time. I am not ready to be a pop-pop. You're from New York, so what are you doing down here? My mom shipped me and my brother to my dad's for the summer. We'd better maintain visual contact. Next up is The Last Song, starring teen pop sensation and Disney Channel superstar Miley Cyrus. It's directed by Julianne Robinson and written by Nicholas Sparks, author of Dear John, The Notebook, and Nights in Rodanthe. So right off the bat, you know a few things for sure. Someone's going to fall in love, someone is going to die, and everyone else is going to sniffle and sob. Cyrus plays Ronnie, a piano prodigy who has given up on her dreams after her parents' divorce. Here, mom and dad, Kelly Preston and Greg Kinnear, discuss their daughter's troubles. Is she still not playing? Not since the day he left. How is she otherwise? Well, let's see. Grades were in the toilet. It's a miracle she graduated from high school. And uh, she doesn't have one friend without a pierced something. Mm. Spending the summer with Dad on the Georgia coast, Ronnie saves some baby sea turtles, makes some dubious friends, teases her little brother, and falls into a romance with Will, a hunky beach volleyball player, and so much more, played by Liam Hemsworth. He shows her his modest little home. You're rich? Will, you told me that your dad owned a brake shop. He does. He just... It happens to own 300 more just like No, 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 no. No, I'm not going in here. Yes, you not are. looking like this. What if somebody sees me? And she shows no. him her no. musical talents. There's something that you don't know about me. <laughs> can Ronnie really play the piano? Maybe. Can Miley Cyrus really act? How can I put this gently? No. She pouts, slouches, and mopes her way through a tediously overstuffed story that sinks down into the boggy middle ground between melodrama and soap opera. I apologize to all the Hannah Montana fans out there, including my own daughter, but you can skip this one. I say skip it too. I, I, I think uh, Nicholas Sparks is the kind of novelist that does not 
uh, wear well if we're going to get a film version of his books every six or eight weeks, like we have been. Dear John was the last one. A film you like better than this, I don't understand that, because I find, even though I have to say skip it, uh, this film is slightly more tolerable just because it's a little smaller and less grandiose than Dear John. I think so. this one is, is, is quite grandiose. On the contrary, I think this one is overstuffed with so much plot and incident and so many kind of emotionally wrenching moments and things. You have, you know, one character with a dead brother, another character with a terminal illness, a church fire church that may fire, be yes. uh, arson, an, an abusive relationship with the main character's best friend, the brother, the divorced parents. It's all just kind of overloaded and overloaded. Yeah, it's a lot. Dear John, on the other hand, was a little simpler and had two things going for it over this one. Two very important things. Amanda Seyfried in, in the main role, who is just much better oh, yes, than yes, Miley yes. Cyrus as, at, at carrying this kind of big overwrought emotion. And also, Lassa Hellstrom, the director, who gave Dear John a little more yeah. shape and a I little more I disagree with on that one, because that's just a different kind of like phony sentimentality going on behind the camera in Dear John. But I think the one thing that almost gets get, you know, got through some of the corn in this picture is Greg Kinnear as the father, because he is a consistently honest and and sort of clean and and really really effective actor i have to say though his performance here mostly consists of not shaving and not wearing socks ah uh, you know you you do Kinnear a disservice but the film no good coming up next edward norton co-stars with edward norton as identical twins in the bizarre new comedy leaves of grass next week steve carell and tina fey find danger and excitement in date night we are going to die plus is she dead or alive christina ricci liam neeson star in afterlife next week at the movies brady what the hell is going on i guess i kind of got razor acted what you had him tell me you were dead? Well, all right, I'm sorry about that, but there weren't no other way for me to get you to come down here. Playing identical twins, a city slicker and a country cousin, say, well, worked for Shakespeare, is a challenge for any actor and a challenge any actor would enjoy. Edward Norton is clearly having fun doing that very thing in the new comedy Leaves of Grass. The movie's about a button-down professor of Greek philosophy who fled his hometown in Oklahoma for greener Ivy League pastures, but he's pulled back home by his marijuana-growing brother, also played by Norton, who has a harebrained scheme to get his brother to switch places with him while he takes care of his problems, which involve bad men with guns in Tulsa. If I don't get up to Tulsa, I'm gonna be in some real trouble. I need you to be me, just like we used to back at home. We don't even look alike anymore. Has that occurred to you? What do you think? You've given yourself the stupidest haircut in human history. The city boys reluctant, but there are compensations, chiefly one played by Carrie Russell. You're some world famous thinker. Or hardly. Some minorly famous thinker. And you don't let your mother enjoy that? That's correct. It's not good to have unresolved problems with your mother. So, okay, nice scene there. Then leaves of grass turns incredibly violent. And when the drug dealers start splattering each other's brains on the wall, you think, uh, did I fast forward to writer-director Tim Blake Nelson's next movie by mistake? Now, Nelson's best known as a character actor and a darn good one, too. He's shown in the Coen Brothers' Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, for one. Here, though, you could get whiplash from his movies, mood swings. I say skip it. Tony, uh, I, I a say, mess. I say skip it, too. I mean, even though Nelson is, is in this and, as usual, is wonderful in a supporting part. And, and Norton, you know, has some, some fun and does some interesting things playing these two very different guys, this sort of buttoned-up professorial guy and the kind of the, the, the wild kind of mountain man drug dealer right, right. dude who's his brother. But the problem is I, I was with this movie for about 20 or 30 minutes, and I thought it was going to be something like... That movie Junebug, about a guy who's abandoned his roots, who's kind of sucked back into them, and it was going to be a quirky, charming <laughs> comedy. Yes. And then it just goes so far <laughs> yeah. off the rails and turns into this bloodbath. It's like Junebug um, meets Pulp Fiction or something. Yeah, yeah and yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it's not the violence itself that bothers me, but just that it, it, it just completely destroys the time. I had of the a movie. similar issue with a better film, The Pine Pineapple Express, yeah, which, yeah. which, you know, kind of set the audience up for one sort of comedy and then became very violent, and although then, it didn't turn audiences well, off. Well, then you have people getting their heads blown off and being here like you know yeah, by cross yeah it's, 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 it's it cannot it's, be pulled off by blake Nelson. it's too bad because he's he's a, a talented guy mm -hmm. coming up next speaking of character actors you know their faces you love their work and we're going to look at these unsung actors who can make even bad movies worth watching something's got to be going on how much did they first pay you to give up on your dreams 27 grand a year and when were you going to stop and come back and do what makes you happy 
question. That was J.K. Simmons in a very memorable scene from Up in the Air. He's one of those actors who make good movies better and can even make bad movies watchable. You know the kind. You, you might not remember their names, but you're always glad to see them on screen. Character actors give so many movies, well, character. Uh, we thought we'd take a little bit of time to celebrate some of our favorites. This is the Peter Lorre Memorial segment. Yeah. And I, I think J.K. Simmons, who, who, who we saw there, is certainly one of the best well, around. Oh, fantastic. He, look, he has five, maybe six minutes on screen in Up in the Air, yeah. and they are the truest five or six minutes in that entire picture. When you saw someone like Simmons in the Spider-Man franchise as, as that blowhard, right. Jonah, Jonah Jameson, Jay, Jonah Jameson you, know, <laughs> you know, a whole different kind of style. But then, when, it, when a character actor who's been working the way that actor, Simmons, has for years and years, gets a well, juicy like, role like the father in father Juno, Juno yeah. he is so completely prepared to maximize everything that role has to offer and yeah. he just shines and that that's what that's what you love about following these people through the years and years of their screen well and, and they bring I mean I, I think he's someone who brings kind of an element of, of, of realness to some of his best roles I think similar to Amy Ryan yeah right? exactly. Amy Ryan has a very similar kind of appeal and approach I think she's you know, it's not every character actor in Hollywood who can actually plausibly deal with a working class character. Yeah, the way she did in, 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 in Gone Baby Gone. Gone Baby Gone, yeah. probably your best performance, uh, yeah. Oscar nominated, in fact. And there's a lack of vanity there, too. This is not someone sort of coming and saying, look at me, act. She's doing In Green Zone, for example, um, yeah. a movie that, that, that I like quite, quite a bit more than, yes, than, you do. than you do. She plays this journalist in Iraq, and she does not, you know, she just kind of shows up in the movie, does the job with this kind of focus and conviction that really leaves you with something, with some sense of this character's ethical dilemma and what she's going through. These actors can grandstand with the best of them, and, sure. and but but when they when the when the role demands it, they don't. It's a different sort of vibe you get off an actor like Chiwetel Ejiofor, mm -hmm. who's a, w a wonderful actor, uh, born in uh, England yeah. and uh, you know best known uh, lately, I think, to worldwide audiences for saving the world in 2012 because he plays the, he plays the uh, scientist or what is he a geologist or yes, you yes. know basically just Some, the guy something like that. that guy with that fabulous voice who right. saves the world. But you know he's an actor who you know through this massive piece of cheese can kind of give it the gravitas and the urgency that that really a, only a good character actor can kind of come up with. Well, and also a little bit of flair, I think. That, that you know it's not always about sort of being realistic and burying yourself deep in in the character but showing the sort of the pleasure of playing the role. Yes. I'm thinking of, of, of an actor who, who's great at this, who's almost a little hammy in the best way, Tom Wilkinson, a <laughs> yeah, British yeah. actor. Fantastic. Most recently, in, in just a couple of scenes in, in Roman Polanski's The Ghost Rider, playing this sort of pompous professor who may, you know, have some really other secrets. Yes, and yes. and he just, he's just sort of basically moving the plot along and, you know, playing what could be a cipher, but he does it with such relish and, and wit. And, you know, wit. Yeah. and understatement, too. And I think you could say the same about Patricia Clarkson, you know, a, 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 like a lot of these folks, a stage trained performer, yep. you know, in, in Shutter Island, which, you know, I didn't love, didn't even like much, you know, she gives kind of a five minute, you know, one woman show in the middle of it that almost makes the movie. Yeah, well, so, she's, yeah. she's sort of the, the, the crazy lady in the cave, and right. there's, you know, Leo DiCaprio shows up wondering what's going on. And again, she's she not takes saying everything anything that, that is necessarily, you know, meaningful or no, great no, or profound, no. but you just watch her and you think, wow, she's this great. is really, she's but really well, we love something. these people. We love these people, and we're going to. And have... there's so many more. Yes, <laughs> yes, and we'll, and we'll deal with some of these folks. We'll discuss more of our favorite character actors on our website. Plus, you can join in the discussion and tell us some of your favorites. Just click on atthemoviestv.com. Can't decide what to see in theaters? Stay tuned for my three to see. It's called male bonding. Okay, haven't you even seen Wild Hogs? Closed captioning for At the Movies is sponsored by. Italiano made with delicious meats and melted cheeses on bakery fresh tasting bread that crisps in the microwave in minutes. The taste of your favorite sub shop without leaving home. New Stouffer's Toasted Subs. Hotel provided by Park Hyatt Chicago. Chicago's award winning hotel and luxury dining experience. Located in the heart of Chicago's magnificent mile on Water Tower Square. A vengeful mother, some angry gods, and four men in a tub. Something for everyone in my three to see this week. At number three in 3D is Clash of the Titans, a remake of a cheesy old epic that isn't too slick for its own good. It's a campy, action-packed, and generally enjoyable romp through the world of Greek mythology. At number two, I have the Korean film Mother, a strange and startling blend of melodrama and murder mystery from director Bong Joon-ho. 
And at number one, the epic tale of a generation struggle to find meaning in the modern world. Hot Tub Time Machine. Jump in. The 80s are fine. Tony, after Sam Worthington's first class flying scenes in Avatar, I got to say, the, the Clash of the Titans scenes, strictly coach. I, I don't get that recommendation, but uh, life's funny. I all guess. right, but hop, tub, hop, tub, tub, tub. All the way, all okay, the way with the okay. dog. That's, that's the important one. <laughs> that's it for now. We'll leave you with a recap of this week's show. And now you can join the discussion by following us on Twitter and on Facebook. Just go to atthemoviestv.com to find out how. And join us next week for reviews of Date Night, starring Steve Carell and Tina Fey. And until then, we'll be at the movies. And leave your scar behind. Moderma.